from history. Welcome lovers of the ludicrous, enthusiasts of the eccentric, and admirers of the anecdotal. We're about to brush away the dust of everyday history to reveal the quirky quarry beneath. Today, we turn back the quirky clock to the 19th century, unearthing an unparalleled prankster parading in royal finery, our very own Princess Caribou. Born in 1791, Mary Baker, our gal of the hour, was not always known as Princess Caribou. No, she was a cobbler's daughter, crafting souls before she started soul-searching. She bounced around as a servant, getting a leg up on the ladders of life, and yet she yearned for something a tad more tantalizing. In 1817, our daring damsel was discovered meandering the mystical streets of Almondsbury, spinning an intricate web of words that no one could understand. She was as cryptic as a crossword and twice as tough to crack. That's when the truly theatrical part of her tale takes off. With the expertise of a Portuguese sailor, Manuel Anesso, and an inventive imagination, Mary Baker became Princess Caribou. He translated her nonsensical language, spinning her tale of being a princess from the island of Javasu. Talk about a rise in rank, from scrubbing floors to purported princess. Kidnapped by pirates, no less, she proved herself a swashbuckling survivor, making a daring dive into the Bristol Channel and swimming ashore. I guess sometimes life really is a beach, folks. The Warhols, our unsuspecting upper crust, took her in, her tail wetter than a haddock's bathing costume, but they swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. They gave her the royal treatment, gowns, crowns, and fewer frowns. She enjoyed a life of luxury, dining on dainties and donning divine drapes. Princess Caribou had finally arrived, escaping the confinement of commonality. Living with the Warols, Caribou perpetrated a plethora of peculiar practices. Praying to gods in trees, mastering marksmanship with a bow and skinny dipping were all part of her piece de resistance. Her dancing, though, was the crowning glory, a spectacle that surely would have shaken Shakespeare himself. She even had her own peculiar alphabet, penning letters and documents that solidified her supposed exotic origins. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, she kept her audience captivated with constant curiosities. The local press quickly caught wind of this curious character, and Mary Caribou Baker became a bona fide sensation. Who needs Twitter when you have the tantalizing tales of a pseudo-princess? Her regal restyling even inspired artistry, with Thomas Barker immortalizing her in a portrait. Wearing her exotic attire, she stood resplendent on canvas, a testament to her tall tale. Quite the upgrade from housemaid to muse, wouldn't you say? Amidst the pomp and grandeur, she even underwent a public baptism. Dowsing in spiritual sanctity, it was the cherry on the Sunday of her established celebrity status. Holy water and high society, a glorious combo! However, all good things must end, they say. The boarding house proprietor, Mrs. Neal, outed our dear princess as nothing more than a former lodger, a regular Mary Baker. The royal rug was ripped right out from under her feet, just like that. Confronted with her past, Mary confessed to her con, admitting to the entire rules. Our awe-inspiring actress just wanted an escape from her mundane existence. Talk about a wild way to resign your resignation! Despite the scandal, the Warhols charitably chucked her across the pond to Philadelphia, where she tried to reprise her role as the enchanting princess. But alas, the American audience was harder to hoodwink. Back in England, by 1824, she attempted a dazzling comeback with a dramatic, dance-filled spectacle in London. But the public proved to be less than pleased. Seems like she should have stuck to her royal routine. Eventually, Princess Caribou bid adieu to her farcical fairy tale, instead braving the booming business of selling leeches. Formidable fakers have to find a way to foot the bills, after all. Finally, in 1864, our once upon a time princess breathed her last in Bristol. Her death certificate bore testimony to her twisted tale, 
listing her as Mary Baker, but fondly recalling her royal alias, Princess Caribou. As we pull the curtains on this chapter of our chronicle, we bid goodbye to the royal ruse that was Princess Caribou. Kudos to the cobbler's daughter for her captivating caper. If you've enjoyed this journey into the jest-filled jaunt of history, please give us a like. Subscribe for more wacky wanderings into the past and leave a comment sharing your thoughts. Until next time, keep laughing at the ludicrous.